Here are the four key ingredients for winning weeknight meals. Now, oh, wouldn't that be wonderful? Every night, every meal is a winner, which is totally possible, even if you work, even if you're busy, even if blah, 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 name all of your excuses. And now before you think, how could there only be four ingredients, Lou? Shouldn't there be 27 ingredients when we count four types of protein and you know dairy and base ingredients and rice and this and that. Well, no, these are different types of ingredients. So the first one, ingredient number one is having a basic foundational, I always do this, a like a solid as unmesswithable foundational set of skills and knowledge and I call it recipe reps. So you've cooked the roast chicken 50 times and you've taken that recipe and you've tweaked it and you've made it your own so much that it is yours and you know, it just is. It's like Lou's roast chicken, that's how I do it and it's amazing. Everybody loves it and I might even be famous for it, who knows? But that kind of recipe reps and you get this layer of skills, this foundation of skills by cooking but also cooking in a way that is more than just, here's a recipe, let me read the recipe, let me do the next thing, what do they say now? And you're always doing this referral back, which if you've been here for a while, you've probably heard me talk about, which takes the power out of you and into the hands of the recipe creator. And it also means that you get your confidence up a little bit, but it's never really there fully because at the same time, while you might nail those 80% meals, you still have that 20% where you mess it up. You don't blame it on you, you blame it on the recipe. A big part of this like foundational solid skills that I talk about are the easy things that make up the fancier meals. So fancy might be the wrong word, but they're like the meals that everybody wants to cook and they think that they should be cooking. But to get to those, there's this series of basic stuff which actually underpins everything. And if you just nail the basics, you can do so much. And my belief is that for a weeknight meal, this should be easy and doable without a recipe. And to get to that point, we nail these basic foundation skills. Why don't we have these skills, you might wonder. Like, why are you always banging on about these skills, Lou? And it's because we are the convenience generation. We're the generation that have just been marketed to that it's easy to just open a can, pop it in or a, a jar, plonk it on a on you know on a big bowl, pop it in the microwave, cook some pasta, and that's dinner, and that's fine because roasting a chicken, doing you know making your own pasta sauce or something like that is hard. It's messy. It's too difficult for you and your time, uh, you know your time allotment and everything that goes with that. But it couldn't be further from the truth in some ways and. The convenience cost that goes in with that is the more you, you know, the less you cook, the less confidence you have and the less confidence you have, the less you cook and you get in this spiral. And I believe that like the layer above that would be the more that you rely on convenience, the more it affects your confidence, which means that you cook less. And you know, there's a whole systemic kind of issue here with we don't have women at home, not that women are meant to be at home, but we don't have like that person at home that can cook because everything's so freaking expensive that we all need to work. You need two people working in a house to make the money to do everything and, 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 and it's gone on this big spiral of everything else. We've ended up, we end up taking out the one, like the easiest thing and making it convenient, which for so many people is their meals. But also for so many people, probably why you're watching this, is you have that inkling, that want or that desire for cooking to be easy. You just want to be able to whip it up and make it delicious and have it be a simple thing because you see other people out there doing the same thing. And what this tells me is that you're lacking these foundational skills to make it all work and make it all easy. So back in the day, you know, we would have had our great grandmothers who taught, you know, were taught by our great, great, great grandmothers and so on and so on. And this knowledge is usually just passed on. But then when our grandmothers got here, it kind of stopped with that generation because that's when 
all the marketing came in. So then that affected our mothers and then that's affected us in a bigger way. And each generation is just kind of more and more and more to where this point today where I have 80% of people coming to me who haven't ever roasted a chicken. Ingredient number two. And this one is your confidence. So once you have your basic skills, let's say you know how to roast that chicken, you roast it a few times, you get your recipe reps in, you start to make it your own, you put different spices on top, you add some maple syrup or some honey, you massage it with ghee, you might even you know, put it in a pot and half fill it with water so you've got a soup underneath and crispy skin on top. So many ways that you can roast a chicken beyond just roasting a chicken. But you get those recipe reps in and from that as you win and you go on you get confident and you build your confidence and things just get better and better from there so maybe when you're winning 80 percent of the time you're failing 20 percent of the time that failure becomes smaller a lesser percentage or maybe when you do fail you know how to fix it and this comes from a place of having the confidence to do that Confidence can also show up as that moment in the afternoon where you go to get out the chicken from the fridge, but then you, in your head, you think, oh, I don't really know how to or when to add the sweet potato chunks to the roast chicken cooking time. And it's that little niggle in the process that you go, oh, and then you delay the cooking, which then adds pressure because dinner's not gonna be ready on time and you're already hungry and you have other things to do and it just kind of stacks on and the feelings bubble up inside and it becomes this whole big thing when all you really needed to do was catch yourself in the moment of, I didn't know how to do the sweet potato. And then we think about that and then you can make it work for you. But so many people blip over that and then they'll go, oh, I don't, you know, they'll use the excuse of, I don't know, I don't have a recipe idea or I can't think of new recipes or I'm in a recipe, whatever version of that story they love to tell themselves. We're taught to look at recipes as silo ideas. So your chicken fricasse or however you pronounce that is a siloed meal and that's your recipe. But can you see how it could become eight different styles of meals? and totally different flavor combinations. Maybe it's still chicken in there, maybe some aren't chicken at all, but how you could take one recipe and make it into many. So for me personally, I started doing this in about 2014. Well, personally, but professionally in my catering business as a way to hack my recipe creation and testing process. And I coined it the meal matrix. And so I have about 10 solid templates or matrix of recipes, I guess you could call them core recipes, that I use to create almost everything that comes out of this kitchen. And of course there are um, exceptions to that rule, there are things that just don't fit within that at all, but for a weeknight meal which you are struggling to put on the table because you don't have the time, you can't think of the recipes, you can't get it right, you can't think of the flavor combos, it's just stressful, it's overwhelming, you don't know what to do with the sweet potato or you're having that blip moment of like, I don't know what to do and so everything just gets spiraled out of control. For those weeknight meals, there is no reason why these 10 kind of core recipes could not deliver delicious meals for you, easy meals for you, make it so fun and like oh, a breath of, breath of fresh air and make it all of that. There's no reason that it can't do that. And maybe on the weekends, you're gonna roast a whole duck or get lobster or do something crazy like that. But can you see the difference there? We're just talking about a chicken fricasse or different types of spag bowl or roasting a chicken and making it in many different ways within that set of recipes. There's no reason that you can't, um, there's no reason that it couldn't fit within these 10 core recipe ideas that I have that I use because they've worked for me, they've worked in my catering business, so they've worked professionally for hundreds and it's not often that I need to look up a new recipe. And we're not bored of our meals, which is the main thing. Do you dream of being able to open the fridge or pantry and whip up a meal with what's there, with what you have, without a recipe? My signature course, Ditch the Recipes, is coming back this winter. Join the waitlist at lunchladylou.com.au forward slash ditch.
Ingredient number three is the inspiration. So this ties into what we were just talking about with our confidence, um, thinking of recipe ideas, how I use my meal matrix and those like about 10 core recipes to really feed us in many different ways and make it exciting. So the inspiration comes from when you open the fridge, can you make do with the chicken thighs that are in there? And before you get tripped up in the thought of, oh, we had chicken thighs last week and for the last four weeks on a Thursday, I should do X, Y, Z. And so that's closely linked to your confidence again, because we can often get caught up in this place of like cooking, Cooking is very glorified. Look at MasterChef or maybe My Kitchen Rules, I'm not sure, but all these cooking shows where there's no washing up involved, there's no real life involved, there's no being at work all day and having your boss be an absolute jerk for whatever reason. And there's no kids that are screaming at you and there's no putting pressure on yourself to think of 30 minute meals because that's the time that you have every night, even though you are exhausted by them, you're tired. You're uninspired, you might be wired, you might want to whine, you really just want to order takeaway or Uber Eats and 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 life get like just piles up on you and then you go to cook dinner. It's like this is really difficult and it's unenjoyable and I, you know, kind of like, oops, I've done it again. But the inspiration can be simple and it can work so well when you have your foundation skills down pat because it becomes like I listed off with the roast chicken before. The roast chicken can have some herbs on it. It can have paprika and cinnamon and turmeric on it. It can have just ghee massaged into the skin, maybe with garlic shoved under the skin as well. And then you have, maybe you put a lemon in the cavity, maybe not, maybe you do broth and make a soup or you do water and make a soup. There are so many ways to make that one ingredient so very different that it doesn't feel like Groundhog Day every Thursday when you cook it for however long you want to do that. And then the fourth ingredient is actually getting in there and giving it a crack. And this bit of like getting in there, giving it a crack, AKA action and doing the thing can be different for people, but this could be a meal prep routine. This could be taking time out to meal plan a little bit. Not, maybe not full meals, maybe just, um, you know, uh, Wednesday is fish. But we could also see this via a meal prep routine where you take a few elements from your planned meal ideas for the week and you prep elements of them to make it easier on yourself during the week. Because when you're starting off, you've given yourself 30 minutes. It's like a pressure test, really. You've got 30 minutes to get dinner ready. You're gonna race in the door, you'll probably be late. You might even still be on a work call. You might have kids that are screaming because it's late and they want dinner and then you wanna get them to bed and then you, you're you tired as well. You just wanna relax, but you've got all this stuff to do. Can you see how much this all gets in the way? And how if you took out, let's say five minutes or 10 minutes and you moved that from your week, like. Monday night dinner cooking and you put it in your meal prep on Sunday, how much easier, like 10 minutes, it's enough time to make it a bit more, you can breathe a bit easier. It might still be a bit stressful, but it's gonna get you ahead. Action could also look like tasting your meals and tasting them before you serve them and then asking yourself that question of what does it need, which is a big question that I have my clients ask themselves all the time. And this question, it's an action piece, but it also builds your confidence in the way of you start to develop a loop that you get to understand, um, yeah, what's my taste buds thinking? What do I think? Let's recap the four key ingredients to winning meals every night of the week. One, we have a basic foundation of cooking skills that you know gives you your recipe reps, Number two is confidence. So that is just believing in yourself that you can cook, that believing in yourself that you do have the cooking gene, even though the cooking gene doesn't exist, but most people think that they don't have it. And so that means they're never gonna be able to cook. But the cooking gene is learnt, confidence is learnt. Confidence is getting in those recipe reps. 
The third ingredient is inspiration. It's getting inspired with the same old things. It's making it easier on yourself. It's looking at your roast chicken and seeing how you can do it in a different way. And then the fourth ingredient is action. It's actually getting there and doing the thing, making it easier on yourself. If you're short on time, implementing a meal plan, a meal prep, bulk cooking meals when you have time off. Don't like leave it all till the last minute because you know you're gonna feel that same level of stress, of overwhelm, of burden, and it's never gonna make it any more enjoyable. That's it for today. Ditch the recipes, my six week course to have you open the fridge and whip up meals with what you have there without a recipe is opening up very soon. So head to lunchladylou.com.au forward slash ditch to get on the wait list. And that's it for today. I will see you next time. Do you dream of being able to open the fridge or pantry and whip up a meal with what's there, with what you have, without a recipe? My signature course, Ditch the Recipes, is coming back this winter. Join the waitlist at lunchladylou.com.au forward slash ditch.